Ivan. Our last speaker is Irena Grudzinska Gross, a longtime professor of, at uh, Princeton University, now of the Polish Academy of Sciences, and she will speak on Poland in Paris. Thank you. I'm very happy to uh, speak after this first two uh, speeches because what I'm uh, what this simplifies my uh, task of uh, showing two publications I would like to talk about that are in a way complementary to all of the situation that has been described before uh, because <coughs> I, uh, I'm going to talk about two publications that are uh, that are uh, have been created by uh, my emigration my my generation's emigration that is by uh, 68ers and uh, of course when i'm talking about it i will have to mention kultura uh, that was the mother of us all so to say <laughs> <laughs> which was created in 1940 oh sorry is it okay? Yeah. Or should yeah. I take the uh, microphone? It's okay. Just put it right into your Yeah, like this. Yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, but before I'm, I, I will talk, I, I need to uh, respond to Yasha's, uh, uh, Yasha's first uh, question about time is that and some is that and what we think about it. It's a very, the Polish perspective here is uh, maybe interesting of course the word some is that has been adopted into polish but as a specific thing that uh, pertains to russian uh, ac uh, dissident activity and was something that was very envied uh, and i remember myself when i was in high school that a friend brought from the soviet <coughs> union a, a, a notebook uh, with poems, with uh, handwritten poems that were uh, started with the Brodsky's first three first poems, and uh, uh, and it was circulating in high schools in uh, in Warsaw. Uh, that that was that was truly something that was uh, an envy. Some is that was an envy of poem, but the word time is that uh, does not function in Polish, and. Uh, does not apply uh, actually to the activity that I'm talking about. That is, the Polish, trans the Polish publications abroad uh, were maybe because of the development of the publishing, underground publishing in Poland, uh, they did not uh, play the same role uh, like the publications of the Russian literature and also Another thing is that when you uh, talk about uh, uh, publications of Polish literature abroad, they are in a way conceived of as something that has been written abroad, uh, that has been produced abroad, that this is a literature that is some, something in a way continuing the tradition of the great emigration from the beginning of 19th century when the voice of the country was produced abroad and not reproduced. It doesn't, didn't have this circular, uh, circular relationship uh, written here, published there, but it has been written there and then somehow smuggled in. This is what, what the idea was. So in, a, in that sense, the word time is that is not uh, uh, no, I actually I cannot read here. You know, this light. This is, oh, you know what? Yeah, you have a light. Oh, this is the light. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. So I uh, the the model uh, another model for the publication for the production of uh, emigre literature was uh, not only 19th century but also was Cultura, that is the uh, monthly and the publishing house that was created in. Uh, right after the war uh, and uh, in Italy, and then it was functioning uh, in Paris, in France. So my title, in a way, Poland in Paris, is a continuation, in, is a kind of a bow uh, in the direction of that tradition, because both of the publications that I'm going to talk to, the, although they did function in Paris as well, 
they were already they, they, they were already uh, in a way uh, not as uh, sedentary, so to say, in Paris. That is, annex was conceived of in Sweden. Then this half of its uh, publishing board was in England. It was uh, half of it was in Paris. It was printed mostly in England and uh, and so on. The same thing with uh, the Schitte Literatsky, which was conceived of in New Haven, and uh, was then printed in and, and published in Fran in Paris. But then uh, it was pu published in. Met, uh, in Milan, and then it moved to Poland after 1989. So, the, 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 my title is a little bit more symbolic than, than actual. And uh, also, the thing is that I, I wanted to uh, uh, somehow enumerate a lot of uh, Russian authors that and Czech authors and also East European authors that have been published in both of these publications, but I don't need to do it uh, because the previous lecture mentioned <laughs> the most important of them. I, I mean, they, uh, uh, the uh, kind of the deck of the names was common to the New York Review of Books and the uh, Lettre Internationale that was functioning in various countries, uh, founded by uh, the Czech author, uh, Anthony Lim, and uh, printed by Index on Censorship. And uh, uh, kind of this was a circulation of texts and of authors that uh, created something, I don't know how to call it. Uh, it was definitely not. Uh, some is that or time is that. It was a kind of a universe uh, of, of, of kind of a society. I don't know, the, the words for it would be very interesting. Sorry? Transatlantic Central Europe, to quote uh, <laughs> Professor Jesse Laval. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, so I, what I really want to uh, talk about uh, are these two publications, of, the, of which the first issues I have with me. I want to show, show them uh, to you because they were all both uh, very important and they are, don't exist anymore, none of them. I mean, the last issue of this publication of literary uh, uh, notebooks, yes, the Shitty Literatsky, is being printed right now, 144th uh, issue. Uh, this is the last issue, in which because the funding for it uh, has been stopped, uh, so it cannot uh, it, it cannot function anymore. Uh, it was uh, both of the people who um, founded, or people, I mean, the groups of the people who founded uh, these two publications are, are really intermingled, and the authors also are intermingled. But Annex, which was created. Mm, uh, the first issue was in 1973. Uh, is a t ten years older than this uh, 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 the other publication, and these ten years, as we have seen, were very important because there was no underground publishing in Poland in that time. After uh, uh, the the uh, the Literatsky was published in 19, uh, the first issue in 1982. And at that moment, already there was a very big publishing underground in Poland, so the situation was completely different. The first publication was supposed it was, it was supposed to be political, or actually, as the name in, uh, indicates, annex, that it's an addition to something. It was supposed to be a conduit for foreign. Uh, political and intellectual thought uh, to promote some kind of discussion about what to do, where to go. Uh, it's, uh, it was founded by Alexander Smola, who, and uh, he, it was kind of run by Smola with his wife, Irena Grossfeld, and uh, his brother, Eugenius Smola, 
and uh, his wife, Nina Smola. Eugeniusz Smola became, at the same <coughs> time, the head of the Polish section of uh, the BBC. So this vision of all the circulation, uh, uh, you know, go, is that we've seen graphically, you know, was in that one family, so to say. <laughs> and uh, uh, also he collaborated, There's the, the BBC smallers were in, uh, were in uh, London, and they collaborated with Index on Censorship, and they reprinted Zappi's, this underground literary publication. Uh, they reprinted it in, in England, while the woman who was one of the editors of Zappi's, Barbara Tolinczyk, founded the Szyty Literackie. So as you see, this is, a, as they say in Polish, the music is my own, and the words are by my, my brother-in-law. So <laughs> it, it's, it's, all in, it's all in one family. What is very interesting about, there are two stories only that I'm going to tell you about this, because both of them are very um, indicative. Uh, as far as Annex goes, this is um, a publication that was uh, organized by us, that is, the people who were active in the 60s in student movement and were uh, the, uh, pushed to uh, go into emigration after 1968 collapse of, uh, I mean, the, the, this, uh, we were, um, this was a Jewish emigration. That is, this was a, an immigration of people who mostly left on uh, Jewish uh, papers to go to, uh, theoretically, to Israel. <coughs> but we were, uh, and I say we because I also was involved in the, in the creation of both of these publications, we were very much of a, a, a generation that was very patriotic and leftist, very patriotic. And actually, this 1968, as many of you know, was uh, kind of the spark for the demonstration, was a protest against the censorship of uh, Adam Mickiewicz's play, uh, which was not an empty gesture. It was a meaningful gesture um, uh, of some kind of a national uh, Na national, national turn, I would say, from from the leftist. And we, as we establish this publication, we're establishing the annex. The title of uh, this uh, was uh, the title meant an addition to uh, to what people need. Somehow, this kind of, in a way, a subservient role. Uh, complementer, a complement to what you are going to say, no lead, leading. And there was a declaration and a conversation with Alexander Smolar who said in no situation that we want to create a sense that we are going to be leading anywhere or something, we are going to be providing with some tools, uh, the people who remained in Poland. And uh, there was an introduction written to this uh, to, to the first issue. That introduction was printed with the issue, but nowhere you will find it, because it was sent back to some uh, people with whom uh, we meant to collaborate, to Poland, and they completely objected to the content of the introduction. So that this Alexander Smolar with his wife cut out the hand uh, the, uh, with the razors, one, uh, the, this introduction from 1,500 copies, uh, and printed this other one, which I actually happen to have in two copies in my first issue, and, uh, um, and they cut from that introduction a paragraph. Now, that paragraph was uh, uh, saying that we without saying who, actually without names, because it was still, it was anonymous, that we are part of uh, the Polish tradition of uh, emigration and we are continuing 
uh, some kind of a you know traditional fight uh, <coughs> uh, for Polish uh, uh, somehow th thought or something like that, and that uh, for us the real uh, differentiation is not between those who are abroad or who are in Poland, but those who are against or for totalitar totalitarianism or something like that. <coughs> so it was a way of somehow placing ourselves on a certain kind of map uh, that was rejected. That was rejected and the voice from Poland at that time was that that would be that being associated with the Jewish emigration would be too dangerous for the new opposition in Poland. So this is one thing that I want to say now. This publication uh, work, I have also, I, I did make, because it is di digitalized, I, as uh, Jesse said, harvested information about it. So it had approximately 250 uh, authors. Of the authors, uh, it, it ended, it, it acted from uh, 1973 till 1989, when it was after the Polish pre elections, it was decided that there's no need of it. Uh, the name Annex, first original version of, the, of that name was Supplement Zagraniczny, which is really was incredible. That was that. Jan uh, Gras, who participated in that, uh, I, can, I, don't, I cannot say it was meeting, but because meeting sounds more formal than it was. In that kind of session with Alexander Smola uh, said, uh, oh, supplement Zagraniczny, maybe let's make it annex. So <laughs> this is, uh, it was at least short. Yeah? However, this role is very, uh, you know, it's uh, the law of it is uh, it's, it's very clear what it was. Very soon, it turned out that there is enough c a kind of contact with uh, uh, Poland that there is no, there was, uh, it was not a book of uh, a kind of a periodical of translations. Already in the second issue, there was an article and the pseudonym written for the publication by Jakub Karpinski. Then it was a discussion, and there were very important issues that uh, opened various discussions about uh, very important ones. Uh, for example, there was an issue, uh, a, Jew <coughs> a Jewish issue in 1986 that was a year before, very uh, hotly contested, that was uh, a year before the a very famous Jan Wojski article published in Poland that opened it for inside Poland, uh, the issue. Uh, so uh, I, just, it's, I, I have a lot of information about this publication. You don't need it, but if you do need it, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to provide it. Now, I don't have as much information about the Zeszyty uh, Literackie, because it hasn't been digitalized uh, yet, because it is alive, still alive, till the, the end of this month. And then later on, maybe, <laughs> the, I'm sure it will be dig digitalized. It's an amazing literary publication, with political as well as everything was political. It was, uh, it was founded uh, in the in the first issue, uh, you know, it's Brodsky. Uh, Brodsky was uh, from the first issue uh, pu uh, published there, but also from the second issue, both Brodsky and Venslova were in the editorial board, as was Peter Kral, uh, a Czech uh, writer, and uh, so this uh, profile of an East, a kind of Central European, East European uh, universe was reproduced here, it produced maybe. The, uh, uh, the uh, ambition of Barbara Toruncik was to bring into Polish culture a lot of, a lot of both uh, other writers that are not really, were not really 
on the horizon. Uh, I don't know, like Seamus Heaney, for example, or uh, also of I'll bring some older uh, archival uh, materials, letters, <laughs> documents. The kind of the, uh, the, the objective was to produce a canon, a very high level canon of uh, Polish literature that would be very, uh, um, in very you know, not, not narrow. Uh, and it worked out very well. I will have to say that for all these year, years that this publication functioned, it was not once late. <laughs> it's a quarter late. That was not once in all these years late, even though at the beginning the editorial board was, you know, the people were, hung, were going hungry, <laughs> were moving, didn't have where to, where to live, and so on. So this is like an homage to Barbara Torinci uh, on this terrible moment, basically, of uh, uh, the end of that the publication. Thank you.